today we're here in my backyard at Old Bridge Farm and we're gonna be looking at blueberries. And blueberries are great, they're high in antioxidants and something that everybody should eat at pretty much any time of the year. Now, what you can do is, of course, you can pick them, put them in the freezer, and then you'll have blueberries all year long. But there are things that you need to do in order to get those beautiful blueberries. And Bill's gonna tell us a little bit about what we need to do to prune and um, you know a little bit more about how to get the best blueberries possible. So let me start off with this, Bill. How do you start a blueberry patch? What, what do you have to do? Where, what kind of a location? What kind of soil do we need? Well, there's a couple of things you need to be concerned about. First of all, blueberries love sun. The more sun you can give them, the better off they're gonna be. So, so full sun all day. So that's uh, one priority. Uh, also, they like acidic soil. So under five, uh, 4.8, 4.95 is, is just about right for blueberries. Right. And so, so that's perfect for our area because here in Swansea, we've got lots of sand, soil is very acidic, and these are native blueberries. You know, high bush blueberries, they're everywhere. Uh, that's true. Uh, you've got good conditions in Swansea. You've got a, a patch of land that's got some uh, nice sun and uh, start growing some blueberries. Yeah. Yeah. So how old do you think that these blueberries are? Well, these are about 10, 11, maybe 12 years old. Mm -hmm. uh, they're high bush blueberries. Um, here at Old Bridge Farm, we prune, uh, try to keep these things pruned nicely every year. Mm -hmm. And that's what produces the big, giant, juicy berries that everybody likes. Right, so, so it's the new keep... growth that really helps to provide the berries. Right. right. You, want to, uh, you want to put the growth into the berries, not into the bush itself, or try to. Right. So I understand that when you first plant a bush, you're supposed to take all the blueberries off because you do want all of that energy to go to the roots. But after two or three years, you really don't want to do that anymore. You want, you really want to focus on the flowers. Right. 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 And the flowers, you know, there's lots of, of pollinators around. I saw a lot of um, bumblebees here earlier this morning. Yeah, we're uh, we're fortunate here. There's uh, a lot of pollinators. We got honeybees. We got. Uh, 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 all kinds of different bees, um, and uh, we have uh, all kinds of flying insects that like to pollinate. Also, believe it or not, I've seen hummingbirds pollinating these bushes. Mm -hmm. So uh, yeah. there's a lot of things that, uh, the, the pollinating isn't a problem here. Right. Um, the one thing you definitely need also is moisture. You need water for these things. Um, if the soil starts getting too dry, you're gonna have issues. Like last year, we had a drought, and the drought persisted for weeks. And I could tell that things were starting to get a little dry. And um, this year, uh, they're going to be irrigated. Right. So, and the other thing that you can do, too, is you can um, put compost or mulch down around yes, the bottom. Yes, compost too. is a very good thing to have. It keeps everything moist, keeps the bushes happy. Right. And, and then also, maybe it keeps some of the junk wood out or the weeds that, that you don't want to have around yep. too. Yeah, you don't want a com com uh, competing vegetation around the bush. Mm -hmm. So that's pretty important. Right. Uh, generally I mow and uh, then I'll uh, clip and uh, uh, weed out where uh, I need to. Okay, so um, we have a couple of bushes here. I mean there's a whole bunch of bushes in the back of here. But you're going to show us a little bit about what you would do to prune now. Because you would have pruned back in March and April, correct? I did a little pruning in, in March, the end of March. But the prior year, I pruned very aggressively, so I didn't have to prune that much. Mm -hmm. um, as you can see, looking at this, this one uh, bush right here, mm -hmm. uh, there's a lot of vegetation that's coming straight up. Now these are called whips. And uh, this is brand new vegetation that's going to produce a lot of berries. So you want the whips? You want the whips, okay. yep. You, you want the whips. That's what's uh, gonna uh, really help you get a lot of berries in the future, okay. so. And what are some of these? Is, is this like um, blackberries? This, uh, these are a lot of pucker brush here. This competing uh, vegetation. You don't want this by the bushes, so uh, I'm gonna be pruning a lot of these. And you just, basically what I do, mm -hmm. is I put my foot on it right there and mm -hmm. I just snip. Yeah. And that takes care of that. Mm -hmm. So, you know, this uh, is another competing bush. So let's get rid of that. That's a pioneer species. That's mm -hmm. probably uh, a small birch sapling or something like that that wants to shoot up out of the ground. And, um, you know, you want to get rid of all this stuff. Now, when you do that, you want to make sure you don't cut any blueberry bushes because sometimes you'll get small blueberry seedlings that grow 
to the side of the bush. Right, and you want those because you want your, your bush to continue yes, to grow, right? Yes, you, you yeah. want them. Now, when you're pruning the bush itself, what you do is you take the old branches and like maybe 10, 15 percent, so not that many. Like this bush has already been pruned, so I'm not going to really take anything. Um, you can see it's rather thin, so, you know, if I take any more, uh, I'm going to be taking too much. Mm -hmm. I think so, another thing that you want to do too is you probably want to have a lot of sunlight getting into the berries. You do. That's you, what's going to really you want, increase. You want the, uh, the air to go through the mm -hmm. bush. And uh, then also you look around, uh, there's, you know, if you see any dead branches, mm -hmm. I got, oh, look at this. You see this? Now these yeah, things are those a pain are vines. In the neck. These vines yeah. are such a pain in the neck. And if you wait too long to get these vines and there's berries on the bush, what happens is as you get the vine out, all these berries are dropping on the ground. So that's not good. Right. But uh, these vines, these vines grow uh, from the bottom, and they're, sometimes they're hard to see because they encircle the plant and blend in. So I try to get them down there and get rid of those vines like that. See, here's another one. We'll get rid of that guy. Yeah, but it does look like you have a lot of shoots coming up, so that looks like you've got a lot of potential here in this plant. Yeah, this is a pretty good plant. Mm -hmm. This is a pretty good plant. Yeah, I a lot noticed of new growth. that um, you've got different colors of flowers here. Some of them are pink, some of them are white. Yes. Um, some of them are already in bloom. Some of them don't look like they're going to bloom for another week right. or so. Right. Now, these are all high bush, but genetically, uh, they figure out what bushes produce uh, berries at certain times of the year uh, and others, some are early, some are late. And you want to try to get berries producing as long as you can. So in a good plot, you'll have bushes that produce early, mid and late in the season. And uh, you know, that's uh, what's good about this particular plot is different. Uh, they're all high bush, mm -hmm. but some produce earlier than others. Right. And, uh, and then you can keep up with them. It gives you a longer harvest, right. which is good. Right. Yep. So mm -hmm. in order to get um, a lot of blueberries, what you probably want to do is have a really good soil. So what would you use for fertilizer for, for blueberries? Well, you want to keep the, uh, the soil acidic, mm -hmm. which is important. Um, I think probably uh, if you can get a acidic mulch, something that has a high acidity. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of the uh, pine mulch is uh, fairly high in acidity. And lay that down right around the bush. It'll improve the acidity of the soil and keep the, uh, the soil moist, which is important. I, re I read somewhere that um, if you use a fertilizer that's a 10-10-10, um, that works pretty well. And also um, you can either use that or you could use sulfur too. You can and, use sulfur too, are... but, but you have to remember, some of these things are organic Right. Some aren't. Right. So you have to make a choice as to what you want to use. Right. Right. I, I'd rather stay away from the sulfur because it's not considered a, uh, uh, you know, certified as an organic mm -hmm. fertilizer. Yep. So Yeah. So it's a personal choice. Right. So another way that you can build the soil is to do compost. Yes. So what? How hard is it to make compost? It's very easy. Very easy. Um, you can take household items. Uh, and add them to a compost pile uh, with soil, uh, grass clippings, uh, a lot of things that you'll uh, produce in your house or out in your yard. Uh, if you're trimming uh, bushes or trees or this and that, everything can go in a compost pile. Um, I think everybody should have a compost pile because uh, it's I mean, it just makes so much sense. Yeah, it's what you should do. Because, you know, it, but if you have compost, if, and especially if you have chickens or, or chickens and, yes. and things like that. All you that can, waste goes right in. Right. All that waste can go either to the chickens or to the compost pile. Mm -hmm. And it really doesn't take all that long to get that compost to turn, especially if you're aerating it. Right. You and, have to aerate it uh, frequently. Yeah. Compost needs oxygen to heat up and compost. So uh, it's important that you turn your piles and uh, you know you can get you can make turners now out of drums and there's all kinds of neat things on the internet if you want to be able to make your own compost that you can actually do and make mm -hmm. and uh, you know I saw a uh, 55 gallon drum that was attached to a handle that you can put the compost in and you turn it and it aerates it 
and it uh, helps heat it up and right. create the compost. Yeah. So that, you know, it's just one thing that you could yeah. uh, can make on your own. Yeah, I noticed that you would spread a whole bunch of uh, compost on your garden. Yes. Because you have a, a big tractor. But that doesn't mean that you have to have a huge pile. I right. mean, you can have a small, you can even have a small garbage tin of compost and be able to make your soil better by Correct. just using what you have at the house. You don't have to go out and buy fertilizer. Yeah, and uh, well, that's that's the greatest thing. I mean, if you want to garden, if you want to grow plants, if you want to grow vegetables, you need compost. Compost is the one item that makes vegetables grow big, healthy, and uh, they're great. You know, it makes them great, uh, along with any plant. Um, is a, it's a key ingredient, so you uh, you should really have compost. Right. Um, a lot of people have separate piles of compost at different, different stages. stages. Right. So uh, you know that's another way you could do it. Yep. Um, it's so easy to make. Right. Now, do you want them in the sun or in the shade? What What do you recommend? Uh, well, you want it to heat up. So uh, you know, in the uh, sun is good. Uh, some people put tarps over their compost, but you want it to get wet because that's another thing compost needs is moisture. Um, so if you do put a tarp, put holes in the tarp, it's fine. It'll help it heat up. Uh, yeah, so. And what about water? Does it need a lot of water? It needs moisture. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So you don't want it soggy. And, no. And if it smells, you're probably doing something wrong. Yeah, uh, compost, uh, well, it's hard to do things wrong. If, if you can put uh, waste that you produce from your house, even if you don't have chickens, like I have chickens here at Old Bridge Farm, I have alpacas that produced a lot of, uh, produce a lot of manure. I, of course, I put all that in. Right, but what are but, some of the things that you wouldn't want to put in? Because that is what would make it smell like. You, you don't want to be putting meat in. No. You know, or things that are going to take a long time to decompose. Correct. Fatty kind of stuff. You don't want to put a lot of oils in. Correct, correct. There are, there are certain things, and there's a, there's a list. So, uh, you know, get on the internet. Educate yourself a little bit right. about what you should and shouldn't put in the, the compost pile. And uh, it's, you'll, you'll see that it's so easy to do. And uh, you create your compost pile, you'll have great fertilizer for your garden, and uh, you'll, be, you'll become uh, sustainable, right. self-sustainable, which is important. Right. You know, at our house, we have one bag of trash a week. And that's because we have chickens, and they get all the good scraps, and then we have, um, the compost pile, and we try to turn that. I actually use a, um, a potato fork. I have a, an old potato fork that it's uh, pronged, and it has prongs that come over. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of like using a hoe, and I just kind of pull it back all the time, yeah. and it, it does a great job. Yeah, so I kind of move keep mine back and forth. You gotta and, keep a turn. You know, again, my area isn't huge, but it's turning into some pretty good compost. I've got some sawdust in it, and um, so you yeah, hear about the green and the brown. You know, what are some of the like coffee grounds are even considered green? Coffee, so, coffee even grounds. Brown? Coffee grounds are good. Yeah. Um, you want uh, you want things that are high in nitrogen mm -hmm. because the uh, the nitrogen really helps in breaking down everything. Um, you you want to get those uh, aerobic bacteria in there to get to work and to eat up all that stuff mm -hmm. and uh, make it into a uh, rich uh, compost and a nice fertilizer. I mean, you can, uh, you can use it on ornamental shrubs, uh, uh, perennial flowers, you can use annual flowers, you can use it on anything. Mm -hmm. And uh, the more rich fertilizer, the more compost you have, the more you're gonna garden, the more you're gonna do outside. And who doesn't like going outside? I mean, and, that's the place to be, right? Right, and saving money, because this doesn't cost you anything. This is all built from stuff that you were throwing away. Yes, you know? yeah, it's, a, it's a beautiful thing, it's a no-brainer. Right, right. Okay, so we know how to grow blueberries now. Do you have a favorite recipe? For blueberries? Ah, I didn't even ask you about this before. Do you have anything that you use blueberries with? Well, We have this cobbler thing that we make. That's good. Yeah. What I like to do is, uh, like I say, we get the biggest, uh, juiciest berries here. And uh, I like to save them up and uh, eat them fresh. I don't like to freeze them. Some people do, right. and that's okay. Uh, I like to take my blueberries and put them right on oatmeal. Mm -hmm. That's it. Mm -hmm. I'm a simple guy. Yeah. I don't need much. <laughs> and I can eat them right off the brine, so it Yeah, who can't? Yeah. I mean, uh, that's the problem. You yeah. walk up and down these rows, and before you know it, you're full. Right, right, yeah. yeah. Well, it looks like they'll, it'll be out in a while. You know, the flowers are yeah, starting to bloom. Yeah, we're getting there. Maybe, uh, maybe another month. Yeah. 
Yeah, when do they come out? July? Blueberries around there? Mid, early to mid uh, June, okay. I start to harvest. Mm -hmm. So uh, I start getting blueberries early here. Yeah. Um, for the most part, the row on that side right. All are flowering. the ones that completely yeah, flowering. If you notice, you walk around a little bit. Mm -hmm. They're the ones that produce first. Yep. So. Um, yeah, we're getting we're getting going here. There's yeah. a lot of uh, a lot of nice flowers, right. so right. it's going to have a pretty good harvest. It looks yeah. like this year. Yeah. Okay. So if you got through the year and you decided, you know what, I have a neighbor that wants blueberries, how would you get them started? Well, believe it or not, a lot of my neighbors already started. I know, but if somebody wanted to get started, do you start with a uh, sprout that comes out of the ground? Do you take clippings? What would you do to start? Well, there's a number of things you can do. You can actually grow blueberries from seed. Really? Yes. Uh, the way to do it, though, is you start early in January because they germinate, uh, uh, the germination process takes forever with blueberries. So would you have started with seeds that you had in your blueberries this year, dried them up, and then started with them? No. The best thing to do is uh, call up a, 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 a good blueberry grower uh, that collects seeds. Now, I don't, uh, but there are a lot on the Internet that do, like Kentu uh, Kentucky Blueberry Association grows blueberries and collects the seeds and uh, they'll send you the seeds take the seeds now with blueberries like I said there's a very long germination process it takes eight nine ten weeks sometimes longer so you know you can get after a while if you don't see something coming up you start to you can start to get discouraged but don't mm -hmm. because you know if you keep it moist eventually you're going to get growth now, I got uh, a, seed pro a heated seed propagation bed that I use, not only for blueberries, but for all my vegetables. And uh, I start a lot of vegetables in January when there's snow on the ground. Mm -hmm. And one of the things I start are blueberries. Mm -hmm. uh, I plant them in uh, trays, and uh, I cover them with newspaper, and uh, I put plastic over that so they stay nice and moist. And that's the key. You don't want them to dry out. Um, I check them once every two days if they need a little more. See, that's the key. With the newspaper, it keeps them, keeps them damp longer. Mm -hmm. um, and that's a pretty good trick. Right. I actually learned that from, uh, from one of the growers. Yeah. But uh, I did some research. Mm -hmm. uh, anyway, uh, once or two days, uh, once or uh, twice uh, a week, maybe three times a week, I'll check them, make sure they're moist. And uh, eventually, you're going to get growth. And you'll, you'll, they start growing so fast mm -hmm. as soon as they come up. That's one way of doing it. Uh, another way of doing it is with cuttings. And you can actually cut a, well, let me show you here. Let me get a good whip. Well, here's one right here. Let me just take, well, let's see. Let's take this whip right here. OK, this is called a whip. Mm -hmm. Now, if you look closely, you'll see little buds right. coming through mm -hmm. the whip. Okay, and what you do is you cut right directly below those buds, mm -hmm. right there. Okay. And you'll take this cutting, this is called a cutting, take this cutting and you stick it in wet sand. And you keep the sand moist, keep the sand wet, and before you know it, uh, it might take uh, a couple of months, mm -hmm. but before you know it, you're going to get a root system developing on the end of that cutting. And uh, with a little time, you'll have enough roots. You'll be able to take the cutting, take it out of the sand, and plant it. I think that's the way I would want to do it. Yeah. 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 But just from this whip, let's see. I got one here. Yep. Hold that. Yeah. Oh, there's another bud there. You've got to watch your fingers when you do this because <laughs> you don't want to. There's another one. Yeah. Uh, let's see. There's another bud there. Yep. So do you? I don't know if I remember seeing. Do you there's put three. all these together and then you stick bushes. them in the dirt, or do you you put them? You can spacing? put them together. Uh, probably the best thing to do is to space them, mm -hmm. uh, maybe an inch apart. Right. That's probably the best thing yep. to do. Yeah. Um, but there you go. There's yeah. uh, three, three three blueberry plants. three plants right, right there, ready right. to go. And how much how, how much does a regular blueberry bush cost usually? I think I've seen them, you know, at the, in front of the stores and things. But well, it depends on the size. I yeah. mean, if you get a little tiny thing, uh, it could be four or five dollars. Yeah. Uh, if you get one that's uh, eight in, eight nine inches, you know. If I plant these in, in right now, mm -hmm. uh, by fall, mm -hmm. they're going to be maybe that high. 
people don't realize they grow pretty wow. fast yeah. once they get established mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. So. Yeah, but you want to use the young the young whips is what you said because it's got that green. Um, well, you can fresh. use you can use uh, you can use fresh fresh uh, uh, cuttings mm -hmm. like these are. Right. In January, you can, oh, look. There's a bumblebee. You can also use the older cuttings, uh -huh. which work as well. Really? Yes. Okay. Yep. yep. Well, good. Good. All right. Well, I see no reason that anybody should stop uh, thinking about having their own blueberries. Um, Anything else that you can think of that we should mention? Uh, well, just that uh, it's uh, it's a uh, you know it's a great thing to do. Yeah. You know, and uh, you don't need this many plants. You can start with three or four plants, right. um, and uh, you know, nurture them, water them, uh, make sure they're happy, and uh, before you know it, you'll be uh, getting blueberries. Yeah, yeah. You know, I, one thing did just come to my mind. Do you have any problem with birds or bears or any other animals? I around? don't have problems with bears. Okay. I haven't seen any yet. Uh -huh. uh, that's not to say uh, it won't happen. Right. It's always a possibility. Yeah. Uh, bears love berries, as right. you know. Uh, with the birds, I do have uh, an occasional bird that'll come down. And, you know, it's the craziest thing. Mm -hmm. They don't just grab a berry and fly off. They'll peck. They'll peck the berries. And you'll see the berries that have been uh, bird eaten. Oh, really? Because they're ruined. They're, they got yeah. all the, the peck marks yeah. in them, and the, you know. But uh, what I do is uh, I put a big pole up. Like and one of those I, owl things? Or? Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. And uh, I, I put one of those balls up with the eyes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, it does work for a couple of weeks. Yeah. Then I'll take that off, and I'll switch it to, I have a, uh, it's, it's like in a, a um, an owl kite uh -huh. kind of thing. It looks like, uh, maybe it's an eagle. I don't know, I forget. It's, it's either scary. an owl or an eagle. Scary looking thing. Yeah, and then I put that up. So I change, I keep yeah. changing. Right. You know, and uh, then they're, they're scared of that stupid. for a while. You <laughs> yeah. know, and uh, you know, after a couple of weeks and yeah. they start getting used to that, I gotta put something else up and yeah. I keep changing. Yeah. And uh, that way, mm -hmm. I reduce the incidence of, of uh, birds. Of birds. Yeah. You know. yeah. Because I don't have home, a huge amount of berries here, you know. Right. So. Right. But this is tough. I mean, you could not put a sheet over this, or you couldn't put, you know, like a. You, you, this would be expensive to put something up that you're going to prevent. Yeah. The birds. You know, if I only had three or four bushes, I'd get some netting or right. something like that. Right. That'd be right. fine. You could right. do that. But, but you uh, know, really, there's enough to share with everyone, right? Sort of. Yeah. You know, birds are hungry too. I mean, uh, just as long as they don't overdo it. Yeah. You yeah. know, it's yeah. okay. Yeah. You know, I don't get too uh, too frantic over right. it. Right. So. Well, I'm really happy that you've joined us today in my backyard. And Bill, thank you very much for letting it us know a little pleasure. bit about how easy it is to have blueberries and how easy it is to make your own compost. You know, why not do these things? Again, yes, I agree, 100%. Is sustainability? It's sustainability, that's yeah. the word, yes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So today you've been in my backyard with Bill and Jody, and we hope you'll join us again. Our email address is inmybackyardch8 at gmail.com if you're interested in more information, or if you'd like to get in contact with Bill, we can put you in his direction. So thank you for joining us today, and get out and make some blueberry cobbler.